So I knew this was going to be a bit of an epic day, but I hadn't really calculated quite how much. Uh, it rained most of the day, I covered 120 kilometers, and my biggest miscalculation was there were five, or maybe even six, significant passes I had to cross our hills, uh, all a couple of hundred meters high, so I ended up doing 1,700 meters in total, which was quite a bit. Uh, it started positive enough though with uh, coming off the ferry and discovering those uh, little booths that did bacon rolls and um, uh, I think I got a haggis roll as well so that got me in a good mood to start with the first of those hills. Top of the past here. Some fine weather. It's not too bad actually, it's not lashing, it's just a cloud and drizzly. But quite a climb, I think this is the top. I call that last pass prematurely. There was another couple of quite big dips and then big climbs again after it. And I've just come over what I pray is the actual pass. I'm pretty sure it is because see the lake down there below so I think that's where I'm going to back down to uh, sea level again basically that's what it's all about start at sea level big climbs uh, then you're just back down at sea level again this bit of the road's busy um, I think maybe some of the urban traffic joined it a while back although I thought that would happen at the bottom of this hill uh, but the, there was a side road the bit from the ferry to there, there that's the first 15 kilometers was very very quiet but now I'm getting passed by three or four cars at a time, which generally means there's a ferry somewhere, it's just unloaded. Anyway, oh, i just take a break for a second. Although I was blissfully unaware of it, this was in fact the first of five, or as I said, maybe six sequences of hills. Uh, I was so exhausted by the end, I stopped counting. Most of the actual still photographs are from early in the day when I had enough energy to stop and take pictures. Uh, later on I shot a couple of videos of me being exhausted and then some uh, photos by one of the locks where the water was a particular luminescent colour. It was amazing and then of course we'll get on to my wild camping spot at the end of the day. But uh, yeah, lots of break breathtaking views to put it mildly. Uh, of course the other limitation is when it starts raining heavily you can't stop and take pictures because the um, uh, phone controls just stop working on you. So all these are kind of early in the morning, the first couple of hills. Um, and then later on I take a break around lunchtime and I set out again and then it really started bucketing down altogether. Now don't let all that put you off. Uh, the route is astoundingly beautiful. Um, I mean every one of this, those ascents and descents means a new set of stunning views. Some of them high mountain passes, some of them bogs, uh, some of them coastal uh, and uh, yeah the, I mean they're all really worthwhile. Um, you could probably wild camp easily enough I'd say in the middle where there's a long coastal stretch with woodland along it and there are several kind of very small woodland park viewing point things that I don't think anybody would even care if you were there the night. Uh, the road, road on there is quite tough um, and the thing to keep in mind is there's not that much again in the way of cafes and shops so you would need a little bit of planning but uh, yeah you, I mean you don't have to do it all in one go the way I did that's just me being that's me being me basically and being in a hurry when I may not need it to. Um, there's a good cafe at about the three quarters points um, that I <laughs> discovered when I was particularly wet and miserable and that cheered me up. Um, and then the uh, that last stretch which runs up to uh, Malag is... Um, there's a stretch of it is on, on the main road again, which when I was lucky, I hit that at about six in the evening. So I think the rush hour traffic and the ferry traffic wasn't really uh, going through it. But it, it's the one bit of the road that isn't that much fun. Um, there is a cycle path that runs alongside it a lot of the way. Now, it's one of those not great cycle paths. The surface is very rough, so you can't really get any speed up at all on it, which is a bit frustrating because you're having to force yourself up hills and then not really getting the benefit of coming down again uh, but uh, yeah it's probably better than being on the the road itself for that stretch if you are on it during a busy phase um what else can i tell you about it um 
uh, yeah, there'd be a few swimming spots um, as well where it dips down, but most of the time you're a good bit above the sea, uh, like the. And finally, the sun's come out again. Look at the colour of that water. Oh boy, I think I am now at about 110 kilometres today, and believe me, I feel it. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, good progress. Uh, that'll get me onto Sky tomorrow morning which is basically on my original schedule. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy about that. But boy, quite a push today, lots of rain. And I'm still 25 to 30K to go. <laughs> so it's not over yet. I'm kind of hoping there's going to be a pub open in the next town. I'm desperate for a pint. Viewer, there was no pub open. Uh, the one downside of backpacking Scotland is there's very few pubs that are open and uh, there was none at all. So for the first time on this trip, I have completely flattened the battery. It just uh, went for, on me on this hill. Uh, I actually intended, I normally intend to stop quite before it hits bottom, but that hill was taking a lot out of it. Uh, more or less at the 100 kilometer mark from where I set out this morning. Uh, which actually is pretty good because it's been a tough day, lots of ascent. Uh, I, I would, I, I'd have to look, my watch kept stopping because of the rain. Uh, I kept, yeah, stopped recording. Uh, but it looks to me like there might be 1500 meters of ascent. I'll have some idea when I uh, compared the segments I do have and total them up. Uh, and as the day's gone on, I've got tired. I've been more inclined to move up from Eco to Tour <laughs> as I hit hills uh, to keep me going. So that that's pretty good. Um, and uh, yeah, that's why I that's why I carry two batteries because I am thirty kilometres from anything in particular. Uh, I certainly where I'm intending to camp tonight, and about sixty kilometres from the next place that I'm pretty certain of a recharge. So that second battery will get me there, no problem whatsoever. Uh, but otherwise. I'd be uh, wherever this is. <laughs> it's beautiful, it's beautiful, but it might be hard to find a recharge. <laughs> Holy shit, no, we're way, way, way more steep climbs and passes that I had to go through today than I expected. I knew there was one coming out of the ferry crossing, but I've had multiple ones. <laughs> this is about the fifth one, they're all around 200 meters, I think, uh, with pretty steep climbs onto them, so. Oh, it's pretty tough going. Uh, I'm glad I'm, yeah, I have the battery to turn up to uh, tour mode and give me a little bit more push because at this stage of the day my legs are pretty close to just going enough. Uh, I think I've got another 30k to go so it'll be the first day I need to bring that spare battery into service because I only have about 10 to 15k left on this one. Which uh, that's what I carry it for. Oh my god. I think I've done about 110 to 115 kilometers. I have 12 kilometers to go <laughs> and I'm butchered. Oh, uh, I'm also going up a very steep hill at the moment and as far as I can tell from the map, it's just going to get steeper. And even with the second battery, I've got to be somewhat careful to leave enough juice to get me to my destination tomorrow. I think I'm, I'm fine, I've, I've, but I'm always a bit nervous as I get right down to the bottom. So I've had a stop, I have a chocolate bar, because I reckon probably part of the issue is the sugar shortage. There is a town or a village about five kilometers away that I think might have a pub in it. <laughs> um, and I think once I get over the crest of the hill, just here, I think I'll be downhill then to that pub. So if that's the case, then it'll be grand because I'll go in and have a pint, probably some food if they have any available. And then it's not, you know, it's still going to be daylight for three hours. So <laughs> I've plenty of time to make that last 12 kilometers. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, this was a big stretch today. But again, viewer, tragically, there was no pub and no food. Uh, this was one of the nights that I think I had to rely on my supply of weird Scottish pastries. Uh, a lasagna pie, I think, perhaps. I might have had a lasagna pie or something like that this night. But I had a beautiful camping spot and I had a swim at my beautiful camping spot. And I think I even had about half a bottle of wine with me. So it, was, it wasn't that hard. The day ended well. 
there was a lovely sunset and I was all set for tomorrow and pushing on to Sky.